Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Sal Kalani. This is Reggie Scarf Steel. And welcome to Spitballing. Just for the record, my son did it again. This is another scarf. I know a lot of you, the people who are watching are thinking, isn't that the same scarf from last week? No, it's not. This scarf is electric blue. And Ooh. this yarn is super nice, just like the other one. The other scarf was a darker blue with some other uh, texture in it. But, uh, yo, he made this one. And uh, I was just telling Sal, I'm going to take him back to the yarn store today. So get some red yarn so he can scarf, uh, knit me a red scarf to go with my red hat. Yeah, you know, Reggie was telling me yarn's expensive for now. I didn't know. I just thought yarn was something you stole from your grandma's closet and gave to a cat <laughs> to play with. Well, the good yarn. I mean, you can get cheap yarn. Don't but don't cheap yarn is probably itchy. It looks itchy. It looks itchy. Yeah, it's and it's it's uh it's it's uh raggedy like all yeah like it's nah, got nah. stuff hanging off of it. Like if your it's, hair if, if when someone's hair is braided like two weeks too long and you're like, all right, dude, that shit's gotta go. Yeah, it's like it's like it's braided and then you got all the little stragglers. There is an invisible the afro place. almost. Yeah, the halo. Exactly. This is the good stuff right here, man. My son does so good what, quality work. So a ball of good yarn costs twenty bucks. A ball of the big yarn or the good yarn. It comes like it's probably about this big and it's kind oh, of like a log, right? Yeah, and they like twist a log. It yeah, and that's twisted. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, just for the record, there are no child labor laws being violated in this situation. Hey, better better check that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He enjoys uh, making the the scarves. It's his right? pleasure to make fifty <laughs> scarves a day, right? That's yeah, what he, well, that's, that's what well he you doing. like making scarves. Shut up and get back in there. Exactly. School. I try to make him go to school, <laughs> but he wants to stay home to make scarves. Nip, Who am I to deny him his passion and his love? Right. Um, <laughs> even if his fingers are bleeding, he nah. still keeps going <laughs> at his own will. He just keeps going. Right. Nip, 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 all day long. Yep. And I don't crack the whip at all. At yeah. least hardly ever <laughs> you crack you crack the knit mm. I crack, yeah i cracked the knit let's go mm. so, uh so, yeah. what's up everybody thanks for joining us on this uh fine uh week of january yeah uh, there you go i'm trying to remember we have audience sometime <laughs> yeah i know I, I i think i've gotten a lot better at realizing that this is not just for you and i right like this is not just a conversation between the two of us that there are people who actually mm. listen and for those of you who do Thank you so much. We really appreciate yes. you listening. And yeah. for those who watch, we appreciate that too. We hope you still enjoy it. And thank you for tuning in. Uh, but we will do a better job of making sure that we know that you're here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hey, everybody. So, uh, yeah, let me see. How did we do last week on our last episode? I mean, the one before where we were just talking about uh, um, Cat Williams did pretty well. Yeah, but, everyone uh, tuned into that. Cat Williams helped us get a bump. Thanks, Cat. <laughs> Dude, anytime, I was looking anytime, that up anytime. though. You know, Money uh, Mike is here here to stay. Uh, I'm just doing what I came to do. Uh, Pimp Man, <laughs> uh, Playboy. You know, uh, these these comedians, uh, so called comedians. Oh man, we did well last week too. People checked this new one again. It did better than the one before. Well, I think people really enjoyed my uh, my commentary about the little green men around the Earth's core with two. They like that. I got the Raptors. truth. Yeah, that did well on uh, we hit on you YouTube. We this gonna tell you what they don't want you to know. That's crazy. Yeah, Nobody. Oh, they put this out three days ago. Nobody commented really, but we got a few views. All right. Anyway, so this oh, no week, one commented. Dude, okay, that's good. No, they'd have anything yeah. bad to say. They, exactly, because they, they, <laughs> you get comments. They're usually bad. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I gotta uh, share something with you. I did this yesterday. We've been talking about this. Well, you get I tramp stamp? It. What are you doing over there? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I got. I got a tattoo on my lower back. <laughs> um, no, I am now officially. Uh, you ready? Yeah, I am buddy. officially a California Department of Justice DOJ firearm and safety certificate. I am a licensed. I have my. Get that closer. What is that? A... Your gun? Your gun owner? I get no. I'm not an owner. I'm not an owner, but I'm. I am licensed to. To own Shoot. one now, so oh, we're you gonna get yeah. a gun wrench. Uh, I am. I'm gonna get what? one eventually. Reggie Steele's gonna get a gun. Hey, dude, if I want to figure out what these dudes are talking about, I gotta infiltrate them. I gotta get on Yo, the inside. Man, if, if 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 someone looks like you and they need a gun, we're all screwed. Okay, hold up though. <laughs> hold up though. 
I'm glad you said that because I wasn't gonna say anything about this. Yesterday, well, was, yeah, muscles don't stop bullets. No, they don't. They don't stop bullets at all. But uh, I was at the gun store yesterday, um, at uh, at this place in Castro Valley, and you know, I okay, let me tell you my experience. Right, you want to hear this experience? This is what happened to me yesterday. Um, <clears throat> I go out to uh, Emory, uh, no, Elite Armory. In Castro Valley, California. I pull up to this place. It's, in a, it's a nondescript store in a little strip mall. I finally figure it out. I park in front. I get out of my car. I walk up to the door. And as I'm reading a sign on the door that says, we're closed from this date to this date, including yesterday, uh, because of a gun show. Uh, I was like, oh, man, I came all the way out here and these guys are closed. And I'm standing there for a minute just kind of contemplating. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I hear... You're trespassing. Leave the premises now. You're being <laughs> recorded, right? They had cameras. And I was like, I swear to you, Sal, I did just like this. When I heard that, you're trespassing. I was like, the fuck, right? Like, who is this? Dude, I'm not joking. When I say I put my hands up, bro, I was like, it's like, you're trespassing. Step away from the door. I was like, what the hell? It's a gun shop, and they got an alarm system. Wow. And if you stand there long enough, they're, I was I was anticipating guns coming out from outside the thing, like someone opened up a little thing. Back up for the door. Robocop right? comes out of the Robo room. Robocop comes <laughs> out. So I'm like, all right, this place is closed. All right, whatever. So then I I said, well, you know what? Let me just check and see if there's something else out here in Castro Valley, right? And I find this other place called. Um, let me see what's the name of it. Might as well give them a shout out because they took care of business. Uh, Solar called Solar tactical right solar tactical in castro valley i get to this place once again it's kind of a, a nondescript store in a little strip mall and you get to the door and you can't go in right there's a sign on the door that says knock on the glass to gain entry right knock on the glass <laughs> knock on the glass so i'm standing there in front of the door i look over there's a glass and i go i go <laughs> right some people look at me they come out, they open the door. Now, look, I'm not a gun owner. I, I don't have guns. I've shot guns before, but that's not my thing. I'm not really into guns like that. I walk into the shop, dude. There's guns all over the walls, right? <laughs> Handguns, rifles, assault rifles, machine. I mean, like heavy artillery stuff, military grade, hunting stuff. And I'm being completely honest when I say this. I, I was lightweight shook. <laughs> right? I was like... <laughs> Damn, that's a lot of guns. Like, <laughs> I was like, I hope it's nothing creepy. bad happens, right? Like, I hope nobody loses their shit in here because it, it's heavy <laughs> artillery in here. There's ammunition everywhere. And uh, there's probably about two, four, six. There's like seven people in there ahead of me. The guy says, he goes, uh, you know, we'll be with you in a moment. He's like, just, just be patient. We'll be with you in a moment. And these guys are at the counter and they're buying guns and they're buying ammunition and they're asking questions and they're doing this whole thing. And, uh, and I was kind of like, yo, man, this feels a little eerie to just be in a place with so many guns, right? <laughs> but, and then I started thinking, what if somebody tried to come in and rob the place? I go, nah, this is the, probably the wrong place. Because you, who's going to rob a gun shop? I mean, look, though, thing man, that, that place is more armed than probably some small countries. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I was like, I'm probably in the safest place ever right now, right? <laughs> so I kind of let go of whatever little, little tension I, I had. So the guy comes up to me, asked me what I want to do. I said, uh, I'm interested in getting uh, a gun permit or a gun license. Hey, are you the only black dude in there? Uh, at this point, yes. There's there's Latin dudes, white dudes, and uh, an Indian dude came in. So this isn't necessarily Oakland. This is like the East Bay, right? Yeah, this is Castro Valley. It's, it's outside of, yeah. it's okay. down, down to 580 past Hayward. Um, and so uh, he's. I told him what I wanted to do, and he said, all right, you want to take the test now or... And I was like, oh, the test. I was like, well, do you have any literature? Right? No, I, I said, he said the test. And I said, well, what's the test? He goes, uh, it's 30 questions. You can miss up to seven. I'm like, damn, that's, you got to pass 75%. Now see, like right off the bat, California is the toughest place to get guns. And this is what we need. So it's just some nut job idiot who can't even read a sentence and, you know, correctly answer the question can just get a gun for no problem you know what i mean like that's right. what gun shows is a loophole people just go to the gun show and you just buy a gun like you don't even have to show anything i mean yeah. and this is even like oh we're gonna give you a questionnaire like yeah it's not that hard yeah. to lie through that right but even right. some states are like that's too much 
That's it's too, too much. much. It's crazy. So he asked me if I wanted to take the test, and I said, "Well, I haven't studied for it, right? I don't, I don't know what it's going to say." He goes, he goes, he goes. A lot of it is common sense, and he kind of looks at me and he kind of sizes me up, right? I, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating the joke when he says it. he kind of looks at me and he sizes me up a little bit, and he goes, "I think you'll be okay, <laughs> right? Like you look like you got some <laughs> common sense, right? You don't look like, as dumb as most of the people who come in here, <laughs> right? I'm not saying that. All I'm saying, I is just that, did, yeah, you, you dumb fuck, so. So then I said, well, do you have a pamphlet? And he says, just like this. And this is where it's kind of a, this is one of those things where it sounds like a little dig, right? He goes, well, California went green. So now everything is online. I don't have any paperwork to give you. And I go, okay, well, where's the where's the site? He tells me the site. I literally go to it on my phone and, I, and it was 50 pages, like a 50 page booklet, handbook. I read the whole thing there. Like I you're standing there, there at the counter? I stand at the counter, went over to the side and I read the whole thing. And I'll give I'll give props to it because for the most part, it starts off by sta stating that, um, you know, these are not toys. This is very serious. They can cause serious injury to children and to uh, people who are mentally disabled and that the chances of suicide increase mm -hmm. exponentially. Harvard studies show that if there's a gun in the house, that the chance of suicide or the de severe Murder, injury and death, to, death yeah. to children, adolescents, teenagers... And, you know, anyone suffering from depression or anxiety, uh, like it's it comes out the gate basically saying like, yo, this thing can cause problems. Right. Mm -hmm. um, as I'm reading through, I'm like, OK, I'm picking up stuff. And there's some things that I learned that I actually <laughs> just told Theo. I told Theo last night. The one thing that I learned, because this was on the test, it said, what are the four four things that you that you teach children out the gate? And they are stop. Don't t if you if a child sees a gun, this is what they should do. Stop, don't touch, leave immediately, and tell an adult. Wow. Right? That's out the gate. Right. So so then hey, let me ask that. you, how many people bought guns while you were reading that thing? <laughs> was probably, like people constantly buying them? Yeah, probably three or four. Jesus three Christ. Or four people, right? So much sales of guns in this Dude, country. It's, so okay, so I'm reading through this thing. I get to the part now, mind you, I don't own a gun. I don't have guns. I've never spent extensive amount of time with guns. So my knowledge of guns and their, their inner workings is nil, right? I mean, I know that there's, there's a bullet, there's a hammer, there's an explosion and a thing, a projectile, like, you know, shoots out the gun, right? Dude, they get to the point where they start talking about revolvers, single action, dual action, semi-automatic, long guns, rifles, shotguns, uh, Dude, it's, it, you know, it's a stock like loading, magazines, clips. I learned more <laughs> I learned more about guns yesterday reading that book than I knew in my entire life of uh, guns, right? <laughs> You're um, like the only one reading it. Nobody reads dude, it. That's the problem. I read the whole thing, except for there's one part where I was starting to get kind of tired. And I was like, all right, let me just skim through this part. <laughs> um, but, you know, I read about gun safety, lock boxes, trigger locks. Cable locks, uh, secure locations, what's considered a, a secure location, separation between the gun and ammunition, not loading, not leading over, leaving, leaving it uh, loaded, uh, what you criminally could be uh, found for, I mean, be charged with, uh, misdemeanors, a felony, like all kind of stuff, right? So um, I'm like, all right, I'm a fairly bright dude. I read this book, I retained it, and they had self-tests that you could do while reading it. So you have to take the test before you could buy the gun. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, maybe to get certified. I, no, no, no. To be certified, know. right? Yeah, to be certified. I don't know if they. I don't know if they ask you if you need to if you have a a license before they sell you a gun. I don't know. Well, why did you Why did you have to take the test? Because I said that I wanted to get my permit. Oh, okay. So you didn't say you wanted a gun. You said you I wanted. I didn't say the I wanted to buy a gun. I just said I wanted to get my permit. So, mm. so I took the test. There's 30 questions. Well, so what are some of the questions? Like, should you point a gun at a person if it's loaded? Uh, <laughs> true or false? Yeah. No, it was a lot of true and false. It was a lot, it was a lot of true really? and false. Really? Yep, a lot of true and false with maybe, I don't know, eight, eight to 12, eight to 12 uh, multiple choice. Now, one of the questions was basically, uh, when is the right... When is the only time you should put your finger on the trigger? When you're just hanging out, when you're doing something else, or when you're ready to shoot? 
when I'm shooting a video with Ja Moran. There you go. <laughs> uh, the other one was, oh, this one I did. I got this one wrong because I didn't, I didn't read this part. I kind of skimmed over this part. But it said, how old do you have to be to buy a gun? 18, right? That's what I thought. But the laws have changed. You have to be 25. 21. 25. 25. 25. Yes. How old do you have to be to buy a long gun? Now, 25 hold is for on, a no, pistol. Hold on. That's just got to be California. That can't be all over. Uh, it's probably California. I think it's California. Yeah, that's got to yeah. be California. So, I mean. And look, so I want to be honest, though. Like, I don't know if I totally agree with something like, well, actually, I guess you get, I, with as many young uh, people in their early 20s doing uh, mass shootings, I guess I don't totally disagree with that. But what I don't like is that you could give a military kid, you could make him go into the military and risk his life with a gun, but then you're not going to let him buy a gun. You know what I mean? If someone uh, is mentally capable, they should have that right. Yeah, but you know, there's there are different rules for um, former military personnel. As far oh, as okay, like, but then then yeah. again, that's another problem. Some of them motherfuckers are crazy. It's all about mental, men, mental man. If if, if you're about... crazy, I don't care what you did before, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's no, what I'm they with gotta you. be. I'm with you, you know. So so to buy like a you know a handgun or a semi-automatic pistol or something whatever, twenty five to buy a long gun, right? Usually for like hunting, twenty one. And no, I, and those are two questions on there that I actually got wrong. Right, because I thought it was 18. And the guy was like, Well, this one is he's like for California, uh, for this type of gun, 25, for this type of gun, 21. And I was like, Okay. So out of the 30 questions, I missed four. What were the right? other two? You remember? I do. One of them was about um there there is a thing about former military personnel being able to carry concealed weapons without like, you know, having mm. to do a a, a you know without having without having to go through the same jump through the same hoops as someone else right right and so the question was about when is the, who are the only people that can when can you carry a concealed weapon and it was like if you know if you just feel like there is danger approaching it's like no uh if you <laughs> if you're worried about uh you know or you some incident happened right and you go no and then there was one about military and it was like you know if you're honorably discharged from the military and and I was like, mm, I knew there's something about military, but I couldn't quite remember. And so, and then, and then the last one was none of the above, mm. right? D was none of the above. And I went with C and I was like, uh, I kind of felt like it was D, but I was like, but I know there's something about military and being able to have a gun and not having to do the same things. And I wasn't sure if it was about concealed. So I went with C against my better judgment. I thought I should have went with D because I thought it was D. But I went with C and the guy was like, well, the answer was D. And I was like, I knew it was that, but I just, I wasn't sure because the military thing kind of confused me. So, so that was three. And then the last one, the last one was very similar to that, like a, all of the above or none of the above. Right? All right. So and you pass and I you passed. get a card and then what happens? Then once I got the light, once I got the, he took my license, he put into the system. I guess he did a background check there to see if there were any red flags, anything that pops up that says that I can't. Another have thing one. that doesn't happen all across the country, which right. is a problem. Right. So he goes, I go through that whole process. He does the whole thing. He's on the computer doing the thing. And after everything comes back clear, I sign a thing. He goes to the back. He laminates it. He brings it back. He gives me the card. And I paid him $25. And that's $25. it. And so does the permit to carry? It's the pay, not to carry. It's a permit to purchase a gun, to own a gun, mm. right? Okay. So it's twenty five dollars. It's good for five years. Wow. Yeah, twenty five dollars good for five years. And once he gave me my card, he goes, "All right, you want to buy a want? gun? What you <laughs> what you want? Yeah, he's like, you want to buy a gun? Eyes <laughs> all bright, like twinkling. That like, shit's damn. expensive too, isn't it? Oh, dude, I looked at some of those guns. There were some on the wall. I just kind of looked. I was like. One thousand six hundred ninety nine dollars. Oh hell no! <laughs> hey, like, like this is crazy. But for me, what I want to get is real simple: shotgun, a shotgun. And yeah. I looked them up. They had some shotguns there. The cheapest one they had was three ninety nine. I looked online today, this morning. I looked to see what's what's the best for like the you know the intro to shotguns. And the top three were number one, 
was a Remington 870, which is the most popular shotgun. That's the one you've seen in all the movies where it's it's wood and metal, and you got the right, you got the the racking action. Uh, the second one was a um, a Bellini M4 tactical shotgun, which is the kind you see in like you see it in John Wick. Um, and I was like, yo, that joint is crazy. Hold up, it's. I mean, it looks cool, but uh, I was like, yo, that I, I'm. I don't need tactical, right? So here we go. Because I took pictures of them. Here it is right here. So there's the... So the number one was the Remington 740 12-gauge shotgun. That's this one, if you can see it. Oh, wait. Hold up. Oh, damn. It's right there. Right? Ah, it's a gun. Yeah, it's a gun. And then the other one was the Bellini M4 12-gauge shotgun, which looks like... like oh, shit. All right, so then what do you... Uh... Okay. Well, hold up. So then the last one, the third one, this one was an honorable mention. And this is the best first shotguns honorable mention, and it's called the Mossberg Maverick Arms Maverick 88, right? And that's the one, it's just, this is the one all black with the pump action. And it's like, yo, whatever you've been thinking about, whatever whatever sound comes to your head when you think about a shotgun, that joint makes it. So so basically, I and I looked at the prices of them, the, the Bellini, the Bellini M14, I mean the M4 12 gauge, that one goes for like, that one's expensive, man. That one was like, I want to say it was something like thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars, <laughs> which is way too much. All right, let me ask, why, why? But hold up, why? For, for the last ones, for the other two, they start off at like, the Mossberg starts off at ninety, between ninety and one eighty, and then the other one is like one one fifty, <gasps> ninety ninety dollars to one hundred and eighty dollars. For a shotgun? For a shotgun. Yeah, dude. So, that's, so understand that's this. They, that's too easy. That's too... So understand this. It was a 30-question test that you can miss up to seven. It was $25. You're good for five years. And you can buy a gun for as cheap as less than $100. If you, what do those AR-15s cost? They got those up there? Those are the ones that, are, that um, can kill They too had something fast. similar to AR, but they're... You know, those are illegal in California now, I think. Really? No one's going on mass shootings with a shotgun. Yeah. No, but hold up though. This is the thing. I did learn this. So the the Remington, I think, is uh single action or single shot. So it's like you gotta do the thing. You can only load one at a time, right? Um, but the Bellini, I want to say the Bellini and maybe the Mossberg, those joints hold up to six rounds. Mm. So you can straight up be on some boom, back up. Like you ain't gotta reload. Some of them you gotta boom some you don't have to i'm gonna reload and do it again nah some of them up to six rounds bro all right reggie let's get to the point why the hell are you looking for a gun wait wait is times that tough over there and uh it it was what's let me ask you another what does the wife think about you trying to get a gun she's down board oh come on man she's a she's a psychologist with an emphasis in early childhood development she ain't about no guns bro (laughs) She ain't about no guns. So, what? so, what so I mentioned it. I mentioned it, and it was like, "You're not bringing it here, right? Like, not around." And I'm like, "No, I'm like, I, I'll figure it out." But I was like, "I didn't buy anything. I just wanted to get the license, right? Just wanted to get the license. That's what it is." And I got it's good for five years. I'll figure it out. But for me, it's really just about um, it's about knowledge, right? It's about knowledge because I learned more than I've ever known about guns. Uh, it's about having access if I want one. Just because I got the license doesn't mean I'm going to get one. Um, and two, I'm not getting a pistol. I'm not getting something that's small that I can put in my waist or carry in my car, like in my glove compartment, which is against the law anyway. Um, it's about protection. Just just well, simple home protection. Why not some small? Um, okay, so I'll share this story with you and everyone who's listening. Years ago, I did an episode of America's Most Wanted, right? Mm-hmm. And... Um, on the set of that episode that I did, the weapons expert, because we had guns, right? Because we I played one of the bad guys. We had guns, and the weapons ex- expert on the set was um, was the weapons expert from the show 24 with Keith or Sutherland, mm-hmm. right? So these guns had blanks in them, and he was talking to us about guns and you know showing us how to use them properly and whatever the case, so that we, so it would be safe handling of the weapons. I asked him. I said, "What's the best gun?" for home protection and he said the best gun for home protection right right, is easily 
the shotgun. Because right. with a shotgun, you don't have to aim, right? All you have to do is point in the general direction and it sprays, right? It goes out, right? And he goes, and also with the shotgun, because it's such an iconic and classic uh, piece of machinery, that when you rack the gun, the usually just racking it is enough that people recognize that sound enough that that's usually enough for them to back off because that means you got something powerful in hand, right? And they know that you don't have to be accurate to shoot it, right? And it'll put a hole in a mofo, right? Yeah. He said, he said, the reason why you don't want to, he said, you don't want a handgun. You don't want some 357 Magnum. You don't want a 40 cal or 50 cal or high caliber handgun because for one, they're single rounds. They're very inaccurate and they're so powerful that even if you hit if you hit the target, it could it, it, it could go through the person and into and through the wall and into another wall and hit somebody else. He's like, those rounds, those that that caliber is too high, it's too powerful for what you're trying to do. He's like, and if you mm -hmm. miss because it's so inaccurate, you may miss your target altogether, goes right. through your wall, through the next wall, into someone else's house, and you kill someone else, or you hit someone else, or injure someone else, right? So that was one of the things in the book, too, about um understanding your target and where it is and what you're aiming and like what you're shooting at and understanding what you have in hand and what you're shooting at. Right. Because if you're, if your caliber or your power is too high, maybe you do hit the thing that you want to shoot at. And then it yeah. goes through that thing and goes into some, you know, so um, I do know, I remember like there is some kickback. I remember my buddy, Joe, who does listen to this podcast, did our song. Does, does okay. the opening yeah. song i went shooting went like when i was young like 21 with him and his dad and uh, some friends in missouri and the kickback on the shotgun like they're like you got to put it really up into your shoulder because it kicks back it wasn't right. terrible but there definitely is a recoil recoil for sure and so these these three weapons that i just looked at they all address that right yeah um the remington you're gonna feel that like some for some people that's what they they want to feel that that recoil because that's just a part of the power. And I could also out. throw out your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're weak, then yeah, it's a wrap. Um, but the other two, the other two have, um, the other two, based on what I read, they have things in place that reduces the kickback, the recoil, mm. right? Which makes it a little easier for you to get off another round. Because if you're like, you're like, boom, and it's like, like you, you know, you got to be set and still. But if you got something that doesn't kick back a whole lot, but still got the same force, and you, boom, and you can get back, Hit it again. But look, Reg. So you're saying it's just home protection. It's just someone's going to have to get into your apartment building, go up to your floor, go knock on your door, or break into your door, and then you're like, "Hold on, let me get the shotgun out of safe." Beep 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 beep. And then you know, Hulk, <laughs> now you're still here. I mean, what the fuck? Yeah, exactly. I mean, hopefully, hopefully, I don't live in an apartment for the rest of my life, right? Like, <laughs> like maybe I live in a house at some point. You know what I mean? Um, so you're not looking to get a gun anytime soon. You just got the permit. Yeah, I just got the permit. I just got, I wanted the like I said, I wanted, wanted the ability, to learn. I wanted the access and the ability to do it. I wanted the knowledge, right? Like I plan on learning about it and figuring out how it works. And then eventually, if I do, then that's what I will get, and it will have a trigger lock, and it will be in a lockbox, and the ammunition will be separate in another place, and it'll be put away. It's one of those things, like well, that's you know, my problem with the protection thing because that's a lot of time to do all that. Yeah. You know, get the ammunition, get the gun, get the safe, get it all together. Then, you know. Hey, look, and that's, I put like this. It's also, it's good because if you have to go through all that to get it, that amount of time that it takes gives you time to think about what you're doing. And if, if, if whatever threat is happening and it's still real at that point, right? Hopefully you hear somebody picking with your locks and you go, hey, get out of here. I call the police and they run away, right? They're like, oh, someone's home, and they leave. But if they don't, and you're like, hey, get out of here, and the lights come on, and the cameras, and whatever, and they still trying to pick a lock, and they break a glass trying to unlock a thing, then it's like, all right. Seems a little ridiculous. I mean, yeah. hey, look, hey, you I got was... the permit. That's good. That's yeah, now you permit. can You got, got the, the knowledge. Permit. Yeah. So all right, let's, not... yeah. let's go on. Okay. This other story that was pretty crazy. Um, But, uh, hey, you do the responsible thing, Rich. Okay, so we were talking about this right before he came on, and this is fucking crazy. Vince McMahon's in trouble, Reg. Yeah, man. <laughs> and uh, these, hold on, let me just say, these men in positions of power that make a lot of money, they really don't play by the rules. 
Oh, dude, there he is. There's Vince McMahon. He's looking like uh, what's that thing on his top lip? That's his, like a mustache. I think. I think he's trying to be like. Uh, he looks like some like evil tycoon. Like he owns Marvin Gardens in Mario. <laughs> he's <laughs> obviously he's obviously dying his hair. And he's monopoly. dying his eyebrows and his mustache. He <laughs> looks like a cartoon character. Right. He, he looks, looks ridiculous. And this was this ridiculous. week when they made the sale to Netflix. Like, yeah. Hey, how come? Why is it that when people, when men get older, their ears keep growing? Oh, because the ears never stop. Ears and nose are made from cartilage. So cartilage yeah. never stops growing. Yeah. So your ears and nose will always grow. Dude, look at that. So, so at one at some point, my ears are gonna be that big. And my nose yeah, dog. No, maybe, maybe if you live up to seventy eight, yeah, and uh, have some freaky things. So this guy, all right, let's get into it. This this fucking guy. So uh, he has this. Um, he okay. So he's in a lawsuit, and this okay. woman uh, is suing him. Janelle uh, Grant. Janelle Grant. We could uh, mention her because she's, I guess, mentioned. I don't know how they would do yeah, that. Yeah, they but, said her name. They said her name. So yeah, here's Janelle Grant gets a job. Oh, okay. Um, wow. All right. Man, he was and, very ambitious. Yeah, he's 75. I don't know what she's something in her 20s, probably, right? Uh, and so he uh so then the story yeah, is I mean, that um her and then another guy, uh another um executive. Lana Nestia, Lana Lana. Yeah, what the fuck is his name? Lana. Uh John Lauren Nidus. Lauren but anyway, yeah. she claims that McMahon and Laurenitis uh, pressured her, or McMahon pressured her into sexual situations and degraded her in exchange for giving her a job as a WWE administrator, coordinator in the legal department after meeting her in 2019. Uh, it said in June 2021, McMahon and another executive locked her in an office, took turns sexually assaulting her. And now the, the thing is, I think I believe it started as a um, consensual thing, but then uh, he got, uh, yeah, all kinds of crazy shit. One, there was, um, he would use sex toys that he named after wrestling stars, which would injure her, which is crazy. I'm going to give you the Undertaker. What is he doing, oh, dude? Oh, boy. Yeah, that's weird. That's <laughs> weird. And that's, you want it's weird. This is weird. She broke, so this is what happened. So, she broke her silence about a relationship with um she said at one time there was a threesome in the locker room and mr mcmahon defecated on her head and then he went and took a shower and then he made sure that she had to stay there and have sex with this other guy while she still had feces in her hair are you serious? <laughs> yeah, dude. And I'm like, where did what 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 makes you go? I want I want to take a, a poop on your head. Like, what the hell? Like, how dude. does sex and waste get involved together? And hey, then dude. this is <laughs> that's not about what? sex. That's not about sex, bro. That's, that's about not power sex. dominance. That's about power. That's about power and and degradation, right? Like demeaning. He yeah. he was yo. I mean, look, I feel bad for her. She's obviously young naive and easily manipulated right maybe she has some daddy issues and that's why she was able she was even open to a guy that age being as young as she is which goes back to whatever ch her childhood trauma is he definitely saw that weakness in her or he saw that ability in her and he he exploited that and he took advantage of it yeah but i mean it's one thing if if you like look if it's consensual sex right like they're meeting up. They're doing a thing. Whatever. That's two. There's two adults making a decision to do a thing. But when you start bringing in bodily fluids, bodily waste into a thing, that's another thing. That's like and then hurting her and hurting and toys and, pain and, and yeah and and, like, and then it's like what we did with that in. Dodgers pitcher, you know? Yeah, it's like and bringing your friend into the situation. Hey, man, look. I think I think that sex should not be criminalized. I think that it should be, uh, I think prostitution should be legal. I think they should regulate it. And I think that people should have the ability to seek out whatever their little fantasies are with consensual adults in exchange for monetary funds that people have agreed upon. Because obviously this is something that exists, is, has existed since the beginning of time. People want to fuck. That's it. People want to have sex. They do. And people want to pay for it. Now everybody can find somebody to do what they want to do. So maybe... There's somebody who's like, yeah, I'm open to that shit for the right price. What I'm saying is, obviously, he was looking for something 
she was open to it, he took it too far, right? He went, he did way too much. If you want to go to that level, bro, go pay for the shit. Go find somebody who's into that shit and y'all go out into the cabin in the woods and do whatever you want. Y'all can piss and shit all over each other. And there's two consensual adults on the same page that like the same thing. And then ain't nobody coming back and be like, he shed it on me. Well, you asked me to. Yeah, no, <laughs> right? dude. No. Well, like, here's a, well, that's the thing. Another part of up. this, uh, the allegations is that he gave, uh, they were trying to re-sign Brock Lesnar you know, from uh, MMA to wrestling. And he sent her a text saying that part of the deal was uh, for him was that he could fuck her. Okay. And so Brock Lesnar could, could... yeah, hook up with that girl. And uh, that's what McMahon texted her. And she has screenshots of all this dude. And so then she has a shot of Lesnar texting her wanting to set up their play date as he called it and um what he uh but then it didn't happen because of snowstorm or something right but it said but when she first when he first texted her he said he asked her to send a video of herself urinating i was like what dude why what's what's that these guys these guys are sick bro these guys (laughs) hey man look i think I believe that power, power and money, right? When you have power and money, your boundaries aren't the same. Your access isn't the same. These guys have obviously seen and done enough or too much. That they want poo and pee. That everything, norm, all the normal stuff is just, it's too vanilla form. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Straight, heterosexual, normal sex? Get out of here. No, he's there done that. Right. It's like, whatever. What else you got? Right. <laughs> Can you bring something else to the table? Right. Like, dude, it's hey man, that's just that's too much. Now look, now Vince McMahon, he didn't let his depravity spill over into Brock Lesnar's life. You know, <laughs> Brock Lesnar is like, yo, man, I thought you he's said like- we had a live one, right? Like, I thought she was cool with this shit. Turns out. Well, then this is the thing. So, yeah, she did sign an NDA and then she broke it recently. But the NDA was they were going to pay her $3 million. Then she got a million dollars. And I don't even know if that was he gave it to her or that was just from accumulation of what they said all the gifts she got over the years equal to. Mm -hmm. But that was it. There was nothing. There was no three million. She never got any more money from him after they agreed to this deal. Right. So then she's like, well, fuck you. I'm going to break my silence. And this is what happened. Okay, so let me get this straight. Now, see, this is the part where it's all messed up. Yeah. This is the part where it's messed up because for a moment there, I'm feeling like, oh, this young lady's being taken advantage of. She's been put in a situation that's that's less well, than ideal. She has. Yes, but she signed an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. There was right, an but agreement. That's how they get around with doing fucked up. I know. Shit. But point being is that there was an agreement for her to get compensated monetarily. She right, and she didn't. Three, she was supposed to get the three million dollars. When she didn't get the three million dollars, she then says, "All right, I see you withholding the money, and I raise you going public." Right. right. Well, that's the thing. So you withhold that information. I'll give you money. You didn't give me the money, so I'm going to give him the information. So now, now the problem is: is this a is this criminal? Hell yeah! How is it? It's criminal because he didn't pay. So in essence, no, no, this, the crim. Well, no, no, it's criminal on two levels. He didn't keep his agreement, and then she broke the NDA. Now, yeah, those but are two that's things the that... NDA was there initially because he committed crimes, and he know he committed crimes. So he's like, "Well, right. let me pay you off, and you shut up about it." Well, how about this? How about if he committed a crime, and she knows he committed a crime? You don't sign the NDA; you just go public. Yeah, right? but that's the argument forever, dude. It's exactly. always that's like putting the pressure the on some women. Just... Don't want to, you know. You can't just, you know. Okay, so then you don't sign the NDA and you keep going and then it progresses, it gets worse. What you think is going to happen? You can't right? put... Hey, look, man, bottom line is we can't put ourselves in her position. But the point I, is, if there was a deal and he just decided, I'm too, I'm so powerful, I don't even have to pay you. Yeah. And then that's... Well, it's like, well, then, you know what I mean? I mean, he shouldn't have done I mean, any look, of that shit. I think... Man, it's insane. It's, it's fucking gross. Man, look. 
it was obviously it started consensual. It was consensual relationship that he, the moment the that he started to try took to, over, yeah. that he took over, that he, the moment that he started to try to bring in his friend or his colleague, and then starting to try to you know demean her. I mean, that's she got to have boundaries, man. She got to draw the line somewhere. But you know, maybe she's in love with the guy and she's open to the shit on some but level. Oh, you remember also he she he's the reason she has a job, you know what I mean? So he has that you power. Can get another over job, too. man. You don't know everybody. Hey man, we don't know hey, what man. her situation is. She can get another job, Sal. She's educated. She's working in the law department. She can get I mean, another job. You said, Jen, she's working in the law department because she's educated or she's working in the law department because she let him poop on her? Like, you don't well, know. I mean, that the poop came later. Maybe he hired her because she was pretty and she wasn't qualified. I don't know her qualifications. All I'm saying is that she got a job initially and then it turned into a thing. But the point being is that there was an NDA. Like, something happened. She signed a non-disclosure agreement. There's supposed to be an agreement that he pay her X amount of money. She then, once she signed the non-disclosure agreement, she knew that whatever it was, she wasn't supposed to talk about. So then he didn't pay the money. Point being is that if he paid her the $3 million, we don't have this discussion. Maybe. Some people still do, you know, some, you know. Now, okay, well. And, and, but and hey, bottom those, line is he should have he paid If, if she signed an NDA and he paid her $3 million and then she goes, you know what? I'm telling. Like, okay, you can tell, but I'm going to need that $3 million back. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get sued. You'll get sued, right. and that's yeah. happened. I'm gonna need I mean, that it happened with that. Stormy Daniels. Was the whole thing? Yeah, um, I mean, it's just look, man. I this shit is kind of murky for me because I'm like, I'm like, I feel like she's been victimized, but at the same time, I feel like she agreed to certain things, right? And then she didn't speak up when it started to become something different, and then, then it's like, okay, well, I've done some heinous shit or some horrible. I let you do some horrible shit to me. And now I don't get the and I hadn't get the money, so now I'm gonna go public. Like the, the right, handshake I mean, would have been acceptable if if she got the money. No, it's the, probably it was rub. never it's never acceptable. No, that's it's not. Point. I mean, no, no, no. Look, there are people. I'm not saying that it's it's not my bag, but there are a lot of people who like a lot of strange shit, bro. Right, like straight up. And I'm not and just because I don't like it. Don't mean that it's <laughs> it's right or wrong. I think now, obviously. Look, I don't think that it's appropriate to piss and shit on anybody at any given time for any reason, right? Obviously, there's some there's some oh. serious issues going on, right? Like there's some serious trauma, or something that needs to be dealt with. But if you got somebody who want to do that, and you got somebody who like it being done, I don't know if anybody likes it being done. Hey man, look, it, if you can if you can dream of it or think of it, and somebody's done. Thing. It. And like, how can just the smell of waste. Once you bring waste into it, how can you even continue doing what you're doing? That's what, what I'm the saying. fuck? That's what I'm saying. It's not about sex, bro. This is just about power. Ugh. It's about power, privilege, and, you know, just, just being able to do whatever the hell you want to do to somebody. And yeah, it's crazy, man. Dude, you know, 78. And, uh, yeah, it's insane. Dude. How old is she? She's in her, tw- I don't know, early, late but... 20s, early 30s. Probably, I don't know. Yo, that's crazy, man. Um, <laughs> but you're right, man. It's 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 power. It's money and power. It's power and you guys can try and do whatever the hell they want. Yeah, it's the same thing with like you know they always talk about with rape. Rape is not rape is not about sex, right? It's about power, yeah. right? It's about being able to control somebody else in a certain way or dominate mm-hmm. someone in a certain way, or whatever. But um, yo, man, that joint is crazy, bro. I mean, that's that's too much. It's too yeah. much. I don't understand why these dudes don't just go find somebody who's into that shit. And then and you got to another about thing, though. Huh? McMahon has paid over like four, he's played multiple women over $14 million to shut up. Right. Now, look, dude, Trump paid Stormy Daniels 130 grand to shut up. 14 million. That's a lot of money. That's what, that's what Poop and Pee is involved. Hey, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and and just for the record, uh, Vince McMahon he got that. Donald Trump he couldn't pay more than that because he ain't really he got doesn't that. have that much. He ain't got that. Re- the records have proven that this dude is broke, right? <laughs> He's so heavily leveraged. He ain't cash got- poor. <laughs> he, yeah, he cash poor. So, um, yeah, Vince McMahon. I mean, look, Ooh. man, everybody got a thing, man. I I mean, I you know I don't judge anybody for whatever they want to do in the bedroom, 
Uh, Yo, I'm but I judging think that the shit for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you don't if you don't want to do that joint, then don't do it, right? Then don't do it. But uh, yeah, that's too much, man. It's too much. These dudes, I don't get why these dudes. It's the same thing with Tiger Woods. We've had this conversation. I'm like Tiger. At some point, man. Yeah, you wanted to be out there doing your thing, bro. Okay, fine. That's where you're at. That's what you're doing. Okay, then go do that. But don't just be doing it with any and everybody. Like the the hostess at fucking uh, hold on no. though. I, I bet you Tiger Woods is like, look, me messing around with the hostess at Applebee's is different than Mister McMahon pooping on someone's head. No, I know. Yeah, I'm I just speaking that. up for Tiger. He would have no, not no, watched. I know that. I know that. I'm just what I'm saying is like you have enough oh. power and money and access that you can actually find someone who's interested in the same things that you are. So you're right? saying if prostitution was made legally all, all across the board, there'd probably be less of this. You could go absolutely, absolutely. Pay for and there's someone you remove, to do this. You remove the criminality from it, right? Yeah. You legalize it, and you remove the shame. That's what it is yeah. too. Is a lot of it is it's the shame. You remove the shame. Yeah. If you say, "Look, man," I mean, there are some people. Look, there are people who exist in the world right now who are not built for relationships, for consistent relationships with people. They cannot coexist with with people, right? But they still have human needs and wants and desires. So why not give them a space and a place where they can they can scratch whatever itch they have, whatever needs right. they need to be fulfilled, and they can go back to living in their little place by themselves and and not have anybody touch their stuff or move their stuff, and they ain't got to worry about somebody else's feelings or emotions and keeping up with how they're doing. It's like, look, I'm happy being by myself, but I have needs. So every once in a while, I want to be able to call up a Stormy Daniels and say, hey, I got a couple of dollars. You available tomorrow? Sure. Right. All right, well, come on through. And you meet her right. downstairs, you walk her into your place, and you go in, two consensual adults, you do your thing, you get your itches scratched, she goes home with some money, you go home, you stay home feeling good about yourself and get up the next day in your empty place and drink, drink your coffee and go to work and play on your computer and do whatever and go back home and be by yourself. And that's what it is. It's like remove the criminality around it, right? right. Uh, remove right. the shame, allow people to be people. This is obviously the oldest profession. They talk about this shit in the Bible. The Bible yeah. is full of a bunch of stuff that's not Jesus true. Jesus would made stand up. up for them. Exactly. <laughs> the Bible has a lot of stuff in it that did not happen, right? But even in that in that story, in a world where people are walking on water and changing water to wine and, and people are, you know. They were prostitutes. <laughs> they were prostitutes, man, because people wanted to get the, excuse my French, but people wanted to get their dick wet. <laughs> right? So... Uh, no, that's true, man. To to this, you so. know what I was I was reading you know what I was reading too? Like the defecation thing was happening. The defecation threesome was in May of 2020. And I'm like, that's right when COVID was like blowing up. I'm like, that doesn't seem very COVID safe. Were there well, masks he, he, worn? <laughs> he obviously thought the world was ending. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh. the world's coming to an end, so I might as well get get all this out. So right. Crazy, Do everything dude. now. Uh, so well, that's crazy. crazy yeah no yeah. dude dude and look man the dude's already it was a thing man he so, said it he do this nda but the 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 company looked into it and what they saw they're like you did wrong shit they let him go then they brought him back so he could you know finalize this deal with netflix and now that's gone through but yeah dude there's shadiness and he know yeah, he's wrong hey, man I, um... I don't care what the woman signed it, yeah, no, it, no, no, I'm not. No, for me, know. no. The only thing I'm saying is, is this is the second time we've seen this, right? Yeah. So the first time, that, so in this situation, all I'm saying is, is that she got a million dollars at some point, and she it was consent, it was consensual. She got gifts or she got monetary compensation. She went along with it for whatever reason. She signed the NDA, and then when she didn't get compensated based on what it was, then she goes public, like. I have been traumatized. I mean, that's yeah. the same thing I think with Stormy Daniels. Like she went public after they didn't, you know, honor the NDA. So like when you're not right. gonna, that's a thing. Like they have such balls to be like, all right, we'll sign this. And then not even yes. pay them. Right. You're like, what are you right. going to do about it? Yeah. Like, well then fine. I'll call your bluff. Fuck you. Well, so, so my, my, my issue is this then my issue is this. If it's a breach of contract, then let's, let's have that. Let's, let's make it a breach of contract. And that's really what it is. But if you go the other way, where it's like, it's not just a breach of contract. Now it's, I've been traumatized and I've been, you know, used and abused and trafficked, right? 
that's what it was before everything. So don't 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 make it about that. Yeah, but that, people didn't know about that yet. Exactly. So this is really just a breach of contract. If she wanted to say, "Hey, look, I yeah, had a personal relationship," but he did illegal per- shit. Yo, you get into legal shit, but you go, "Look, I had a personal relationship with this man, and we had there's a lot of things that happened that I agreed not to talk about in exchange for monetary compensation. I have not said anything. He needs to pay me the rest of my money." Now, if he doesn't want to pay me the rest of my money, then I will breach this contract, and then I will tell you what we did. And, and that's what we'll happened. See, and that's and then we'll we'll see if that compels him. But it's also the Carrie Hilson thing with with Puffy, right? She came out and was like, he sexually abused me. He did this. He did that. And blah blah blah. It was one day that she dropped she dropped a bomb on Puff online. She went crazy. The next day, she got paid thirty million dollars. She rescinded everything. She got paid thirty million dollars. She got paid thirty million dollars. So day one, one day, it's the worst experience of my life. I've been traumatized. I've been trafficked. I've been abused. I've been used. I'm not happy, and this is bad. And this guy did it, and he needs to pay for this. Thirty million dollars show up. Okay, I take all that stuff back. Thank you. Have a good day. So then Yo, everybody so else would have a relationship with this dude. You know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? It's like you're screaming one thing. And then when the money comes, because if if you've been traumatized, abused, and used, right, and that's where and that's the stance you're taking, you're taking, right? That's what you that's what you're standing on. Then the money shows up or not, you don't care because you have been personally accosted. But what you're mm-hmm. saying now is that my abuse is comes with a price. Ooh, yeah, but however, a lot of times women aren't going to be believed or going to get any love anyway. Right. So they're part of it's like even if I fight it. I'm going to come with nothing and lose. At least this way I'll come up with some money. But then $30 million makes me think, what are you hiding, puppy? Well, $30 I mean, million? No, no. That's a lot. What it was is uh, it wasn't him. His companies, right? Like she went, out, she didn't sue him. She sued his companies. The companies have insurance. So he didn't come out of pocket. Mm. The insurance companies came out. She was smart. She didn't go after him personally. She went after his his LLC or whatever, his his companies. Right. Oh, and the dude, companies oh, yeah, are this like, is where they said, yeah, she was forced to participate in sexual encounters with male prostitutes while Mr. Combs watched, masturbated, and recorded videos. Oh, I didn't know about that part, but you know, the events were right. called freak offs. Jeez. Man, what's up with these dudes? What that's some <laughs> that's some cuck stuff, right? You want to sit there and watch your girl get railed on by somebody else? His girlfriend, too. Back? Your girlfriend, bro. He's rather just shut. Hey man, yeah, everybody got it? a thing, man. Oh my God. Everybody got a thing. Hey, look, Maybe it's I, good we ain't rich, right? <laughs> hey man, hey, it's good we're not that rich. Jesus Christ. Hey, look, look, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I could be that rich and I'm not going to. I don't, well, I don't know, so Rich. But, nah, I'm, it's, it's so you about gone. Reggie, dude? You... <laughs> How about give me the money and let's see. Reggie likes that. to drop diarrhea on toes. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Scat talk is all bad. Remember when right, two cups, one girl was a bad. After, oh, yeah, with dude, two girls, a, one cup. Yeah, yeah like, that was a big thing. A big thing for a minute. It was bogus. I was like, "What is a big?" I don't deal? know. After hearing this stuff, it's even common out there. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's too much, man. <laughs> All right, Reggie. Uh, well, I'm gonna have to use the facility. So wrap us up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, well, hey, folks. You got a guest next week, so we don't down to her. We're not supposed to talk spiral. about our air every episode. We're I got such tell you not bad to do spirals it. without them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah today was uh today went off off the rails a little bit um well i hope uh <laughs> guns and scat yo straight up man money and power and privilege and a lack of boundaries man right like it's crazy power power is what they say uh absolute power corrupts absolutely right <laughs> yeah so there's a lot of corrupting um, going down there's a lot of corruption uh I look once again, just just so I can reiterate this and then we'll get out of here. Hey, man, look, everyone got their own personal proclivities, like their likes and dislikes and their desires, wants and needs. Right. And I'm not saying that, you know, you should or shouldn't or whatever you want to. I'm just saying I'm saying you should not poop on people. Though. Yeah, I'm. look, I'm I don't I do not condone. Let me just make sure this is clear. I do not condone putting any type of human bodily waste on people right Keep like those no linking demeaning. logs off my chest yeah no there's no demeaning behavior like that's cleveland just, steamer like, that's what they call on that, it. oh geez like that level of, of degradation is just inappropriate mean wrong right 
Um, but I'm saying that other people who like different things, like for example, the puffy thing, it look, man, if you into seeing other dudes knock out your piece, then that's your thing, right? I look, whatever, right? Some people, some people only like it missionary, <laughs> right? That's it. They're like, that's it. And you're entitled to only want missionary. Then there are other people who like, yeah, let's here, give me a leg and let's hang from the chandelier and let's bring in a swing and you know what I'm saying? Let's bring in a couple leather straps and whatever. Hey man, you're inside. Some people that. are like, let me grab my X lax. <laughs> you had to go there. Uh, all, all right. right. Well, wrap this yeah, nastiness man. up. Man. As long as you ain't hurt nobody, that's it. As long as you ain't hurt nobody. Um, at least a, a, a pain that they didn't ask for. <laughs> made me feel I feel ashamed. They gotta put my hood on. Let's get out there of here. There you go. <laughs> yeah. You know, they may like maybe somebody, you know, some people like a little a little twist and a little bite, right? A little, a little smack. Right, like, a little, little corn a little pieces. Little tap, right? That's hey, that's okay. If, if they don't, if the person didn't like it or don't like it, then that's a problem, right? It's got to be consensual. We got to be on the same page, but whatever. All right, man, let's get out of here. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It was a lot of stuff going on here. Some of it was appropriate. A lot of it was inappropriate, right? So hopefully you learned some stuff about guns. I know I learned a lot. Um, don't worry, I am not going out. I'm not gonna become a, a crazed gun fanatic and go buy 18 guns and nothing crazy like that. Um, but I do feel, I do feel more knowledgeable about the whole process and having it, being able to speak from it from an experience, a point of experience. So, um, with that said, uh, if you did enjoy, please like, share, and subscribe. We love doing it. We're gonna keep doing it, and uh, we'll see you next week. That's Sal Kalani. I'm Reggie Steele. And this is Spitball. Peace.